Hello everybody and welcome back. My name is Dominic. I'm the host of the Android Factory. Today's episode we're going to build out this search screen that we see over here. It's going to be at least part one of the series here. We're really just building out this search bar itself. As we start typing here, we'll see that, uh, you know, a couple things end up happening. One, we're not actually registering this query yet until I stop typing a little bit, then we capture that query. And also when there is something in the search bar, we have this little animated trash can over here. If we click it, it goes ahead and deletes everything. As I type one more letter here, you'll see it animate in. If I delete that letter, it'll animate back out, etc. So we just have a nice looking UX here for the user to interact with, to actually search something. In the next episode after this, we're gonna connect it up to our Rick and Morty API to actually fetch data that the user is searching, display it to them in a list and all that kind of stuff. We see over here, we have a search view model. We have a search screen, a composable, and it's actually the only dependency in that composable. And so just gonna go ahead and delete this, redo it all for you live. Hopefully you learned something. So like I said, I'm just gonna go ahead and delete everything here. Uh, we're just gonna copy this again, delete all that stuff, and we will restart here. All right, so we are simply going to have a uh, composable here, the search screen. Uh, we are gonna have the search view model, which I guess, I didn't actually need to delete that boilerplate, but here we are. And quickly rerunning the app here, when we go back to our search screen, we simply have absolutely nothing here on the screen because our composable is blank. So let's go ahead and rebuild everything here. Okay, so the interesting thing is we are going to be dealing with the basic text field here. We're also going to be leveraging the uh, the one that has our state here, and this is the text field state object that we're gonna go ahead and uh, utilize here. Uh, we're actually gonna store this text field state inside of our view model here. It's gonna be quite simple here. We're just gonna have a, a variable to find inside of our view model, the search text field state, and we can actually reference this inside of our search view model, search text field state. So now we have a basic text field, and the state of that text field is going to live inside of our view model. This is, you could argue, maybe a little bit of overkill right now for this first video, but when we have this view model connected up to our repository, which talks to our network layer and all that kind of stuff to actually make the user queries, we are going to need to listen and observe this state here. Uh, and one thing we can do when it comes to observing this state, specifically the text that the user is inputting, is we can actually uh, listen for that. So let's just say the search text state is going to be a snapshot flow of the search text field state dot text. And this now, if we take a look at it here, is actually a flow of a char sequence. So we can just operate with this information however we want with the comfort of flow. So one thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna add that debounce in, which is that 500 millisecond delay. We are also going to map latest here, which will say uh, if it dot, let's say blank. So we're saying if the value of that text field is blank, we're going to put in the awaiting your command. This will kind of be like a, an, an empty state, so to speak. And then otherwise we're just gonna convert it to a string. And then we're going to store this in here with our classic state in, we will have the uh, scope be equal to our view model scope. We will have the started equaled the sharing started while subscribed with the stop timeout of 2000. And last but not least, the initial value is simply going to be empty. All right, and we'll get a couple little warnings here. We just have to opt into a few different things uh, here, the flow preview, experimental coroutines and whatnot, but um, all of this is functioning as we would expect. So we have our text field state that we can do something with here. We have now a, a snapshot of the actual text that the user is inputting, and that's because it's all configured where the basic text field is referencing the same state in the view model. So realistically, to get us back to where we were before, we do kind of just need to do some compose stuff. Um, so here we go, we have a simple toolbar here, we're gonna call it search. Again, if you haven't been following along, this is just a custom composable to create a toolbar-like thing at the top of our screen. And then we're just gonna do a little bit of magic for our basic text field. So we'll start slow here, and we're just gonna leverage a row for this. We are going to say modifier.fill max width 16 dp, and we're gonna set our background color to color.white. We will set our and then inside of this row is where we're gonna go ahead and put our basic text field here. 
course, on our root column, we're gonna have to have a modifier here, fill max size, perfect. Let's just go ahead and rerun things to see where we're at. And coming back to life here, we bounce over to our search bar here and we should see some stuff starting to work. It doesn't really look too fabulous whatsoever, but we can clean that up. But as we saw before, first things first, we do have an icon here, search icon. We'll also apply a tint on that to be our uh, Rick primary to make it look like the background as well. This is gonna put two elements next to one another. So one thing we can modify inside of our row is the vertical alignment here is going to be center vertically and then the horizontal arrangement, we will go with 8DP. And now we see here that we have a search bar to the right, or sorry, we have that basic text field to the right of this search icon. And by simply adding this 8DP padding to the parent row there, we now have something like this, and the search bar is starting to look a little bit more like a search bar here. It also functions, but we're not necessarily doing anything uh, with the text that we got there, even though we actually have this set up here. So let's go ahead and get a little text view underneath some things here. So we're gonna put um, just a regular old text, sorry, not text view, text composable. We're gonna have to put some kind of text in there, but we can go ahead and observe this. So let's just say our search text by our search view model dot search text state, and then we will collect as state in here, collect as state with lifecycle to just be a little bit better. Uh, and then here we can go ahead and just input our search text like that. We're gonna go ahead and of course, elevate our font size here to 32 SP as well. But as we see here, we can start deleting and, uh, and, and we don't trigger an update until after that 500 milliseconds. So as long as I'm touching the F key within 500 milliseconds of one another, nothing is actually happening, right? That D bounce of 500 is taking over and we're not you know, emitting anything from that flow. And the second I stop here, then after half a second delay, it starts to update the, the UI or, or specifically this search text state starts to update again. And so this will be helpful, especially when we get to the network call side of things, because we don't want a network call every single time the user is adjusting the search query. We only want it after some delay, some 500 milliseconds, 200, 800, whatever you want it to be, so that we kind of believe, oh, the user has stopped typing, and so now we should do some kind of operation for them. Right, And so that's basically the thought there. This is looking pretty good. The last little bit here is gonna be this icon at the end here. So we're gonna use an animated visibility, the trash can icon that we had before. If you made it this far in the video, slap that like button, comment down below uh, if you're enjoying it and whatnot. And uh, animated visibility, so we need to push a Boolean into here, right? And again, we can leverage that search state quite nicely. So we're gonna have our search view model. We will use the text field state here. We will say text, and then we will say is not blank, right? That's gonna result in a Boolean. And if it is not blank, we're gonna go ahead and just copy this for simplicity. We're gonna add in our delete icon here. We're gonna change this to Rick Action, which is this highlighted blue looking color. And instead of search icon, we will have the delete. Let's just go ahead and run this and see how it looks. There is one issue I am foreseeing, and we will fix that pretty simply here. So if we bounce over to the search screen, awaiting your command is now on two lines. Interesting, okay, okay, okay. Anyway, we start typing here and we say hello we will see that uh, yeah, it's quite not the greatest, right? It's very, very light. It's on this white background. It's actually not all the way over to the edge, but it's also within this bar here. So we're gonna do a few things really, really quickly. We obviously are gonna have to apply a modifier to our basic text field state so that it fills the entire um, you know, component there, that it seems. So we're just gonna say fill max width Maybe wait one if that gives us some trickiness and whatnot, but that should push this all the way over. And it does look like that might have pushed it too far over. So let's go ahead and try the weight of one F and see if that just takes up the remaining space. Yep, and then we see this over here. Let me just make this 
a little bit more obvious for you. And so now we have this trash can icon over here. If we go ahead and delete everything, it should also disappear. So this is functioning exactly how we want it to, except there is nothing in the on click. So let's go ahead and handle that real quick. So on our modifier for the icon here, we are going to attach a clickable right here. And at this point, we're gonna also leverage that search state. And one thing we can do here is we can say search view model, search text field state, and we can actually edit the state. At this point, we are also going to call delete and length. Oh, there it is. Yes. Length is a reference to, uh, you know, how long the actual text is inside of that text field buffer. So uh, something like this will actually trigger uh, you know, deleting from zero, the beginning all the way to the end. Coming back to life, we hit the search tab, we go over here and type something in. And now when we click this here, it deletes everything in that search bar. It also then therefore removes itself because there's nothing in the, the text buffer anymore. So this icon here is pretty good, except the one issue that, uh, you know, it's not that big of a deal, but it is inside of this search bar. And in the beginning of the episode, we had it on the outside of it. I just think it looks a little bit better. So we're gonna go ahead and clean that up. But at the end of the day, this is really all the same functionality from the beginning of the episode. So if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna clean this up, as I said. Uh, make sure to subscribe. Uh, so that you don't miss out on the next couple of videos that are coming out for actually implementing the search. But we are in a pretty good spot here having, you know, basically this search text state ready to go. We're just going to start emitting some network calls off of the emissions from this flow, and we're going to then handle the results in the UI. So should be fun, but uh, for right now, we're just going to clean this up. So the problem that we have right now is we actually only have one row, right? All of this, this entire item here is one individual row. All of the actual work on it is on the parent row. And realistically, in order to get it outside of this container here, we're going to have to introduce another row and most specifically a row around this, right? So we're going to have to just paste in our icon basic text field there. I'm going to move a lot of this stuff, actually all of it to there, because for instance, we don't want the background on the parent row anymore, because then we would still see the background behind the icon. So we're going to go ahead and remove that. We will keep the fill max width, right? Want it to take up the entire size of the screen. We're going to keep the padding as well, but we don't need this secondary padding here because we can apply it internally. Yeah, we're gonna want now the row and the visibility to be centered vertically. We're gonna wanna keep the spacing here for the 8DP. That all makes sense. Now this internal row, we're gonna wanna change this to weight 1F instead. Our padding at this point is going to go away. We will keep this padding though. We're gonna want that background. We're gonna want everything within that row. That would be the icon and basic text field. We're gonna want that centered vertically and spaced by 8DP. And everything else should be good. Instead of color red, we're gonna change this to Rick Action, which is that bright blue looking color. And hopefully, if I didn't forget anything, this should all work. Clicking over to our search screen now, we are awaiting the command. And as we type in hello, we see that the search bar shrinks a tiny bit uh, for this trash can over here. We can go ahead and click that trash can. It then expands over, awaiting your command, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, aside from this being on two lines, which we can maybe change by just making the font size a little bit smaller, this looks very similar to what I showed in the beginning of the episode here. So whatever our search query is, we have that kind of stuff in there. Again, we have that nice delay, which is fantastic. We even delete it all before the query ends up hitting and all that stuff just works, right? So now we have a good search UX. We have a nice bar for someone to interact with. We have a custom bar to interact with. At the end of the day, it's literally a couple rows, a couple icons, and this basic text field. So Compose is incredible. You can build basically any interaction you need with the really, really basic building blocks that they provide for us. You have total control over what's going on. And I don't know about you, but I am pretty excited to go ahead pull this uh, search view model a little bit out, make it into a little bit more robust uh, options and whatnot, and we're gonna actually be able to get some cool data on screen. That being said, thank you so much for following along. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.